Hi everyone, Kirk Lyons with You Magazine here. As you know, Valentine's Day is quickly approaching, and for many of you, so is the pressure of pulling off that perfect romantic evening. If this rings true for you, worry not. I've got you covered. The way I figure it, the cornerstone for your romantic evening will most likely be dinner. And everybody knows there's nothing more romantic than ending that dinner with an elegant dessert and a great glass of champagne. My mission for this issue of You Magazine, create that perfect dessert. It's easy to prepare and is gonna match well with champagne. My choice, ginger creme brulee with lavender scented whipped cream. Doesn't that sound great? Follow me on this. Regardless if you eat your Valentine's Day dinner at home or out at a restaurant, making your own dessert allows you to end your evening in your home, in front of your fireplace, alongside your Valentine, enjoying a wonderful dessert and glass of champagne. You see where this is going? Hey Kirk. Ryan. Who's your date for Valentine's? What's that got to do with anything? Well, you got the end of this evening all planned. I'm just wondering if you actually have someone to share it with. Don't worry about it. Besides, you don't know her. You don't have a date, do you? I didn't say that. You didn't have to. I'm pretty wise. Oh, <laughs> brother. Don't worry, buddy. I'll find you a date for Valentine's. <laughs> I think I've heard enough. The, the day, Ryan, that I let you find me a date for Valentine's Day is the day I eat Hot Pockets for dinner. And that, my friend, is not going to happen. Okay, so I have managed to compose myself, and I'm ready to make a little creme brulee. What do you say we get cooking before Ryan comes up with a, uh, another one of his bright ideas? Yeah. So, uh, what we're going to start here with is uh, one quart or four cups of heavy cream. And we'll just add that to this sauce pot. And you really do need to use cream here. Milk is really not going to work for you. There we go. All right, to that, we are going to add one vanilla bean, which I will split in half and scrape. And I'll just show you how to do that real quickly here. Just lay it on a cutting board and starting at one end, just draw a line right down the center all the way. Okay, now we've got two halves and we can just get the knife in there and kind of run that through and out come all the vanilla seeds. And the pod and the seeds can go right into the pot. We'll do that with this side as well. Now, we're gonna add a little grated ginger. And what I have here is about a two inch knob of ginger, fresh ginger, that I have just using my paring knife here, just taken the skin off. And we'll just grate that right into our cream mixture. Okay, and I don't wanna grate my knuckles, so we'll just throw that into the pot. And we are ready to head to the stove top. Okay, I've got my sauce pot here with the cream mixture sitting on top of a medium high flame. And as you can see, it's just starting to bubble. And that's a good thing because once it comes up to the boil, we'll kill the heat and then just allow this mixture to steep for at least 20 minutes. Our cream mixture has cooled and I have strained out the vanilla pods and ginger. Now, in a separate bowl, I have six large egg yolks. To that, we're gonna add a half a cup of granulated sugar. And we're gonna whisk this to combine. But you really wanna mix it well and incorporate all the sugar. And you'll know that happens when these egg yolks start to lighten in color. And you'll see that sort of happen before your eyes. And as you can see, we're a much lighter yellow now. So we're ready to combine. And cream is still a little warm, so we'll start slowly, but we should be okay. Yeah, we're fine. Let's just add it all in. There we go. Okay. Now, the next step is to get our custard mixture into some ramekins. And as you can see, I've placed six six ounce ramekins inside of a baking dish. And I'll kind of explain why I did that later. But for now, 
Notice that inside the ramekins, I have pieces of crystallized or candied ginger that I've chopped up really small. And this is going to give an added little bite to this ginger creme brulee. Now, we just start evenly doling out our custard into the ramekins. And once we've done that, it's off to the oven. Okay, our ramekins with the custard are ready for the oven. Uh, but what we're going to do first is we're going to fill up our baking pan here with some hot water. And you really need to use hot water. This is called a water bath or in French, a bain-marie. And what it does is it allows the custard to cook slowly and evenly and it keeps it very creamy. Now the trick is make your water bath as close to the oven as possible because a tray with six ramekins and hot water and carrying it across the kitchen is a recipe for disaster. So here we go. And we want to put in enough water so that the water level rises about halfway up the ramekins. And there we go. Okay, now let's open our oven door and we'll put these inside. We're going to let these bake for 40 to 45 minutes or until the edges of the creme brulee are set, but the center is still trembling. Okay, our timer has sounded, so let's check on these creme brulees. And they look really good. All right. Now I just want to show you here, you can see that the edges have set up, but when you give them a jiggle, they're still very loose in the middle. Okay, all that's left to do now is to get these out of the water bath, let them cool down completely, and then stick them in the fridge to set up for at least two hours or up to three days. Okay, so we have our creme, now it's time for the brulee. Uh, to start, we're going to take about a teaspoon of just regular granulated sugar and evenly sprinkle that over our custard. And you don't need anything too thick. Actually, a little on the thinner side is better, but as even as you can get it. There we go. All right. Now, we're going to take our kitchen blowtorch. And uh, this is just an inexpensive model that you can pick up at most any cooking supply source, but if you've got a real industrial uh, blowtorch in the garage, use that. It'll work just as well, if not better. So here we go. And the key here is to keep the flame moving. You'll see it's starting to melt the sugar. And once the sugar gets melted, it'll kind of start to brown it. Got a little swirl there. Okay, we are ready to go here. And as you can see, I've uh, put a little dollop of that lavender scented whipped cream on top. Now, to make the whipped cream, really very easy. Just take about a tablespoon or so of fresh or dried lavender, crush it up in your hand, and then mix it into about a cup and a half, two cups of heavy cream. Stick it in the fridge, let it sit there overnight, and the next day when you're ready to eat your dessert, strain out the lavender and using an electric mixer, whip this up until it forms these soft peaks. And when it starts forming those soft peaks, you can add a little powdered sugar to sweeten it up. So. What do you say we give this a taste? Oh, who could that be? I don't recognize the number. I think you should answer it. Ryan, what's going on? Well, I felt bad you don't have a date for Valentine's, so I kind of hooked something up. You'll like her. She's a friend of my mom's. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just let this go to voicemail. As for the rest of you, have a happy Valentine's Day. And of course, keep reading you, the online magazine devoted to your favorite subject.